Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements. This is patch 3.1.2, which I'm calling Praise Be to Glorious Leader. And this patch is all about improving the city building experience. Uh, so the first thing you might have noticed uh, with the Red Rocket build, if you've done this before, is that we finally figured out what was causing those uh, floating flags in midair and got rid of those. Uh, and then the designers and I decided to go through every single settlement and do some whoop, cleanup work. Uh, so we've done things like remove those floating objects, add more water, uh, remove things that look like they were just floating there, uh, such as the stairs to nowhere, and just trying to make general improvements to smooth out the look of the settlement at every level uh, and make it more functional. So there's been a lot of work done on those. And that leads me to my next point, which is that I have to switch back to a bi-weekly patch schedule uh, in order to make any significant impact on some settlements now without breaking things. Um, I really can't pull it off in a single week. Uh, there's just too much complexity to deal with, and, and testing through all of it takes a substantial, substantial amount of time. So uh, I think a bi-weekly patch goal makes a lot more sense than trying to rush through things and risk introducing new bugs. So I am going to be going to a bi-weekly patch schedule going forward, though uh, as necessary, I will release hot fixes in between those patches if uh, there's any major issues you guys are running into that I can take care of. All right, so the next thing I wanted to address was the fact that it's it's difficult to tell how far along a settlement is. Uh, and so I've added some improvements to the HUD on the left there. So the first thing you'll notice on the lower left that's new is the Waving Vault Boy, which shows you your current population. And then next to that is probably the most important number, which is the number of settlers the city plan is designed to support. So you are welcome to add more than that, uh, but that's the number you should target if you want to see your settlement upgrade. So if you don't have that number, it's very unlikely your city will upgrade. So that number uh, is your target, though you can go over if you want to build extra stuff. Uh, the settlements are all designed to support that number easily. They can, Some of them have a few extra jobs where you could just throw down some beds and they could handle that. But uh, uh, anything beyond that number, there won't be a place for those settlers to sleep. So that's how that number is determined. Next to that, we've got a picture of a city showing you that these are the city stats. Uh, the first being the level, so that's L0, which is the foundation level. And then the percent toward the next level. So that percent is, the I think, the thing that people were missing most uh, as far as what was obscured from them and where people weren't sure uh, why their city wasn't upgrading. That percent meter will show you how close you are. And that's based on the time components. And the time components are two things. One, there's a minimum time involved. And two, you have to have a certain number of plots at a certain level. And so this counts up both a combination of that time requirement and those plots. So it's something you can't have direct control over generally because all of that is done automatically. Uh, but the one way you can impact it is to make sure that you have that settler count reached uh, to the left of it. So if you hit that settler count, naturally, Actually, your settlers will build all of the plots required to start pushing that percentage up higher. So the uh, percentage isn't something you can directly impact, which is usually what these meters are for, but it's just to make sure you can see some sort of progress because it takes so long. Uh, I think a lot of you were getting frustrated that it, it felt stuck, and it might turn out that some of you are stuck, and now you'll have proof because you can show me uh, that percentage that isn't budging for some reason, and we can work from that to try and troubleshoot for you. So that'll serve a lot of purposes there. All right, and then the last thing uh, I want to talk about and the reason for the patch name uh, is the feature I am most excited about, and I think you guys will be too, uh, and that is the leadership system. So the leadership system, two things have changed. One is that uh, the system is now open for third-party mods to inject new leaders into the system. Uh, I've upgrade, updated the Builder's Toolkit with a new tutorial on how to do that, and just like the rest of my tutorials, it's written for anybody at all. It doesn't require any prerequisite modding experience, and you could get new leaders added into the system in just a few minutes, and it's very, very easy to add, and it even teaches you how to uh, package and upload a mod if you've never done that before. So uh, I would say anybody who's never modded could probably put up a pack of a bunch of leaders in a couple of hours uh, with no experience whatsoever. So it's very, very... Uh, simple to follow, and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I think there's a lot of great candidates for NPC leaders already in the game that could be added, uh, and then you actually have the option you could build your own NPCs if you wanted and turn those into leaders as well. So this, uh, there's plenty of options there. And then the the coolest new system I think is the reason that there are synths wandering around the settlement, and that is the leadership trait system. So I, I've hinted at that 
uh, in the mod previously with the little note that was underneath each of the leaders. And I'm going to run over to the city planner test so I can show you guys more of what I'm talking about. So the institute wandering around here is due to Act 688's uh, major trait, which is called Institute Ally, which makes the Institute come and defend this settlement so that there uh, are synth patrols and coursers wandering around helping out with defenses. And uh, you can view all of this information by going to the Change City Leader screen under the City Plan. And uh, you'll see that below each of the, the available leaders, there are a series of traits listed. So I'm going to go over X688 since he's already here. And uh, the first one listed is the major trait. And that's those major traits are something very unique to each leader. And they supply some type of new gameplay, some, some big impact. The goal is always to have uh, them change the way you think about a current the current settlement that's being run by that person. So it's going to have some big impact. And some of them are, are purely cosmetic. Uh, technically, for example, this Institute Ally, it's not just cosmetic because those uh, NPCs will actually fight and defend the settlement. So they will help out with defenses. Uh, and then after, and then some of them are also a big impact on gameplay as well directly. For example, Curie increases the amount of food that agricultural plots produce so that you can you can either use her to require far less farmers at a settlement, or if you want to take advantage of the resource sharing from caravans, uh, you could put her in charge of a farm focused settlement that produces way more food than uh, for all of your different settlements so that you could have uh, much less food needs in various settlements. And the idea behind the, the traits is to not only add flavor, but add some strategy and synergizing uh, between your different settlements. So now you can plan out the best way uh, to make use of each leader so that you can optimize all your settlements if you're into the min-maxing or if you just want to have some more unique gameplay options. Uh, and I think that this system can be expanded indefinitely. There's lots of lots of things I haven't touched yet, lots of cool ideas I already have in mind that I'll be implementing in the future. But I want to see what kind of leaders people add to the system and then I'm going to implement uh, traits that would go well with them. So I'm going to open up a uh, forum post for suggesting new leadership traits so we can talk about the different leaders that have been added and uh, you know what describes their character and how they would have an impact on the settlement and we'll work together as a community and come up with some cool new ideas and I'll try and uh, implement as many of those as is feasible for you guys so we can keep expanding the system and and uh, go forward with it so all right getting back to x688 as an example so after the the major trait which is that big gameplay impactor then we've got the two minor traits so the first one is a benefit and the second one is a weakness. Now the, the benefit that X688 has, Futurist, increases the speed that industrial plots upgrade. So if you're going to do fo heavily focused settlements, for example, agricultural focus here and then a uh, industrial focus somewhere else, you could use take advantage of these traits to increase the rates or speeds that those are, are developed. Uh, and so that is the benefit. And then the weakness, for every minor benefit you have on a leader there has to be a weakness as well so his is in inhospitable uh, which reduces the likelihood of visitors showing up which means you're going to generate less income from that settlement so the the minor benefit and weaknesses are designed to be to be minor they're not meant to have a massive impact though if you're into min maxing if you like strategizing about all that stuff they can have a overall big impact especially if you're focusing your settlements on particular plot types so the uh so each of them has those i went with the three set the one major one minor one weakness uh, when people start adding their own leaders they can expand on this and add more if they'd like i wanted to keep it uh simple and high impact as opposed to having a bunch of uh different washed or uh, watered down different traits um, but i will i want to expand the system to support as much as uh, you guys are interested in developing so uh, as the new leaders get added i will add support for the traits you guys have in mind um Okay, so I think that's enough talking about that system. I think you guys want to get in and play with it and uh, and try out all these new features. Uh, definitely check out the patch notes. There are some things that I didn't cover, some improvements uh, to the gameplay and bug fixes, etc. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the recruitment mention that I talked about in last week's news video. Uh, if you turned in an application, I have received it. I just haven't gone through them all. My goal is to get through them this week. Uh, and that also means that if you are looking to contribute to some settlements, there are a bunch of openings right now and there's still time to get in uh, your resume of sorts to uh, let me know you're interested and, and we can we can chat about how you can be involved. All right, guys, uh, as always, take care and enjoy the month.